Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at the Andrew Road triple murders committed by Sek Kim Wah, who is the only serial killer in the history of Singapore. The exact birth date of Sek Kim Wah is unknown. It is believed to be between the 18th of March and the 23rd of July 1964. He was born into a broken family with an elder brother Sek Kim Seong born in 1962 and an elder sister Sek Yokia Mui born in 1963 while his younger sister, Sek Nilk Nagok, was born in 1966. His father, Sek Yun Chin, was a heavy gambler who was rarely at home, and at the age of nine, his father left his family to live with a mistress in Ang Mok Kyo, 11 kilometers in the center of Singapore. His mother, Hong Mui Chai, also abandoned the family and had an affair with a married man. With his grandparents not willing to take care of him and his siblings, the four began to fend for themselves and started stealing to survive. Sek attended four years at primary school before dropping out. He had an obsession with wuxia novels and kung fu movies in childhood. However, he molested his younger sister, Nyuk Nagok, when she was age 12 and bizarrely began enjoying injuring himself and would get into fights with other students while at school. His parents had strange ways of punishing their kids, including once chaining up Kim Seong and Sek after stealing a bike. Kim Seong was jailed in a boy's home for theft and went AWOL during his mandatory two-year national service in Singapore before cleaning his life up and restarting his education and becoming an electrician. However, Sek Kim Wa continued down the criminal path and at the age of 13 joined a gang called Gi It San before being sentenced to a boy's home in 1979 for four years for theft. While there in 1981, he was assigned to plant orchids in the garden of the household of Robert Tai Bunk Hong, a businessman born in 1922. Tai had nine children. The youngest, Dawn Jacinta Tai Aishan, was born in 1973. His remaining eight children were all adults, with one a foster son, and was seen as a kind, generous and virtuous individual who helped ex-convicts reintegrate into society by allowing them to work in his factory. Paroled in 1981, Sek commenced his national military service and was given temporary employment in Tai's factory, who by this stage was retired. Sek decided that he would rob Tai for his money and enlisted the help of Malaysian citizen Niu Kok Meng. Neil was a Malaysian citizen born in 1964 in Pejan Nanas, Johor, Malaysia, which borders Singapore. For six of eight children, he had three older sisters, two older brothers and a younger brother and a younger sister. His father was a driver in Singapore. Originally well behaved and helpful, he worked part time at a rubber plantation while in high school before dropping out of education due to his family's financial difficulties, working in a bakery near Pekan Nanas. Sending money to his family monthly, in 1981, the 15-year-old moved to Singapore to work as a welder. However, it was while there that Niall fell in with a tough crowd and joined a gang. His best friend, fellow gang member Lao Beng Hyong, was killed by four rival gang members on the 22nd of May, 1983. Niall only met Sek a few days before the Andrew Road murder case and agreed to take part in the robbery of Robert Tai, but was unaware that it would manifest into murder. Stealing an M16 rifle from Ni Sun military camp where he was based, Sek and Neil headed to Tay's bungalow on Andrew Road at 9.10am on the 23rd of July 1983. They brandished a knife barging into the bungalow and took for Tay's Filipina domestic helper 27-year-old Jovita S. Vigador hostage. Using the weapon, they threatened Tai's youngest daughter, 10-year-old Dawn Jacinta Tai Aishan, her Mandarin tuition tutor Tang So Hei, who was giving her lessons at the time, as well as Tai's 40-year-old wife, Annie Lo Ao Li, forcing them to lay down inside the house and tying them up. Dawn was forced to call Tai, who was lured into the room. Stealing their jewellery, Sek told Lo to write a check of 5,000 Singaporean dollars. With Neil looking after the hostages, Sek went to the bank to cash the $5,000 check. Feeling sorry for her, Neil removed a plastic bag covering her head. Returning and unhappy with the money in the house, Sek went back to the bank and withdrew a further 7,000 Singaporean dollars. Neil told the women that he would not harm them and that he had no intention of harming anyone with Neil shaking hands with Dawn as a promise not to hurt them. However, this promise would not last long. 
Sek used a Rafia string to strangle Tai, and when Vis didn't kill him, he bludgeoned him to death with a stool fracturing his skull. He then strangled Lo to death before using the same wooden stool to strike Lo's covered head. Sek then proceeded to strangle Virador to death. Realizing that things were not going to plan and unwilling to collaborate with Sek in committing murder, Neo armed himself with a rifle and locked himself in a room with Dawn and Tang, intending to protect the surviving hostages. With Sek unable to get into the room, he fled in Tai's Mercedes-Benz car. Neo then released Dawn and Tang and drew a map of where Sek lived on an envelope, gave it to Tang, armed her with a small kitchen knife, gave her his Malaysian identity card and told her to help him buy a coffin because he was going to commit suicide, requesting that he be buried next to Lao Beng Hyong. Tang tried to dissuade Neo, and it was only when Neo pointed his rifle at Tang, but she fled the house with Dawn. Neil tried to shoot himself twice, but failed as he did not know how to use a rifle. He then fled the bungalow and met with Sek that afternoon to divide the loot. Neil left Singapore for Malaysia using a friend's passport while Sek remained in Singapore. Tang gave the envelope with Sek's home address and Neil's Malaysian ID card to Singaporean police with Sek arrested at his elder sister Sek Yoke Mui's apartment in Alexandra Road on the 29th of July 1983. Neil surrendered three days later on the 1st of August 1983 and was extradited back to Singapore. Both Sek and Neil were charged with murder. However, on the 8th of July 1985, triple murder charges were withdrawn from Neil as all of the murders were committed by Sek. Neil pleaded guilty to committing armed robbery with a firearm under the Arms Offences Act of Singapore and was sentenced by High Court Judge Punch. Kumaraswamy to life in prison and six strokes of a cane. After serving two thirds of his sentence, 13 years and four months, he was able to apply for parole and was released from prison at the end of 2005. He returned to his native Malaysia and despite reports that he has passed away, these cannot be confirmed and his life in Malaysia since his release has been a pure mystery. However, Sek was not quite as lucky. He claimed diminished responsibility, admitting to killing all three of his victims. On the 14th of August 1985, following a 17-day trial, Sek was found guilty by Justice Lai Kiu Chai and Justice Abdul Wahab Goz of the murder of Tai Lo and Virador, with his defense of diminished responsibility rejected. He was sentenced to death with Singapore at the time, having a mandatory death sentence by hanging for murder. Upon hearing this, he smiled and thanked the judges in Cantonese, stating that he wanted to die in the gallows, noting that it would be thrilling. None of his family was present for his sentencing. Sek filed an appeal at the Singaporean Court of Appeal, which was heard on the 16th of March 1987 by Chief Justice Wee Kong Chin, High Court Judge A. Pei Raja and Judicial Commissioner Chang Sek Kyong. This appeal was rejected a day later on the 17th of March 1987. On the 9th of December 1988, Sek was hanged at Changi Prison. Cremated at Mount Vernon Crematorium, despite a final wish for his ashes to be scattered into the sea, they were stored in an urn at Siong Lim Temple, a Buddhist monastery in Tao Pio, Singapore, with a simple funeral held in accordance with Taoist principles, with his parents and siblings the only attendees. On the 2nd of September 2003, the Singaporean TV show True Files, broadcast on Media Corp Channel 5, analysed the case. On the 12th of March 2022, the murders were analysed on Inside Crime Scene, which was broadcast on MeWatch. The Andrew Road triple murders were also explored in the book Guilty as Charged 25 Crimes that Have Shaken Singapore Since 1965. Thank you for watching, please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform yourself of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment, it helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, have an amazing day and remember the truth is always more interesting than fuction.